Happy Birthday, America! Since there aren't parades this year, or big social gatherings, to celebrate Independence Day, I'm making a video about how to draw an American flag with access. As I listen to fireworks going off all over town, Hi, this is Crystal. You can do a lot of drawing in Microsoft Access with just a few commands. This American flag was drawn with two methods, Report Line and Report Print. The stripes and rectangles are done with Line. Line can also draw rectangles, which can be filled or not, and the color can be specified. The border around the flag isn't filled, but the stripes and union are. The stars in the union were done with a character in the Wingdings 2 font, character 234. Let's review the code to do this. First, we need dimensions for the flag so we can be accurate. I got measurements from ushistory.org and I've put the link in the video description as well. You can also download this code from msaccessgurus.com. The procedure name, which is a sub, is Flag American. It was named with flag first because I plan to figure out code for other flags too. Most often, this code would probably be called from code behind a report, but not necessarily. That's why there is a parameter for the report object, pReport, instead of using the code context object. Next are the XY coordinates for the upper left position of the flag that will be drawn. Then comes the maximum width and maximum height. Because the flag will be drawn proportionally, these parameters are the maximum allowed instead of the actual size. Measurements are in TWIPs, 20 in a point. There are 1,440 TWIPs in an inch. If you're using centimeters and divide 1,440 by the standard conversion of 2.54 centimeters per inch, you get about 450 TWIPs, but this isn't accurate since TWIPs are small. The actual number is about 567 TWIPs per centimeter. Optionally, you can send a parameter to fade the colors so the flag can be rendered behind something else. All the variables that will be used are dimensioned first. The variable name and data type are declared. At the top of the module is Option Explicit. This ensures that variables are declared when the code is compiled so that errors in names will be picked up. Next, we see if the optional color set parameter was specified. If it is anything except the default value of zero, then colors will be faded. Blue, red, and black are affected when fading, but white is always the same color. The width to height ratio of the flag is 1.9. The drawing width is set to 2 points. Next, the actual height and width of the flag are calculated, keeping the proportions and considering the maximum dimensions sent in the parameters. X2 flag is the X coordinate of the end of the flag. Y2 flag is the Y coordinate of the bottom of the flag. The size of the union is calculated. The height of each stripe is 1 13th of the flag height. Because the start position for the first seven stripes depends on where the union ends, we need to know the size of the union before the stripes are drawn. So the union size is calculated. There are 13 stripes. 
Only the red stripes are actually drawn, though. The first seven stripes start where the union ends, and the remaining stripes start at the beginning of the flag. The report line method is used. The syntax for this is odd, and IntelliSense doesn't work. The first coordinate is in parentheses, then comes a dash, then the second coordinate in parentheses. You can specify color, or whatever four color is set for the report will be used. BF is specified. B means the line will be a box, not a line, and F means it will be filled with the color. Now the blue background of the union is drawn. To do the stars on top of the blue background, I had to find a character in a font that was a star, since it turns out that the report print method doesn't recognize CHRW to do Unicode characters. The X and Y distance between each star is calculated, and the font size is set proportionally to the height of the flag. Now some report properties are set for the stars. Font name, font size, and foreground color. The width and height of each star is calculated. The Y coordinate will be whatever was passed for the flag's Y coordinate plus the Y spacing for stars minus one half the height of each star. Now we have five sets of two rows of stars, except the last set only has one row. The first row is six stars, and the second row is five stars. Current X and current Y are the coordinates for the print method, which specifies the star character. The next X position is calculated, and the inner loop continues for the first row. Then the X coordinate is set to the beginning of the line, plus some space. The Y coordinate moves down, and the row with five stars is drawn, if J isn't on five for the last set of rows. The Y position for the next row is set, and the loop continues. Finally, a box is drawn around the whole flag image. Only the B parameter is specified, so it will be a box, not a line, and it isn't filled. So that's it. Now you can draw an American flag with access. Do you have a logo or other graphic that access could draw? Let's connect. I can help you figure it out. While this might not be our best year on record, and we clearly have a long way to go to be a nation of equality, I'm grateful and proud to call this country my home. Thanks for joining me. When the tide comes in, all the boats rise. Through sharing, we all get better.